what's up? I'm Liz, the Split Today DIY, and today we're going to be taking a look at a project I just completed. It's right here. It is a turntable, uh, sometimes called a Lazy Susan. I think that sounds weird. Um, it makes me think of like old kitchens. So we're going to be calling it a turntable. Uh, basically, it's a way to give a 360 degree view of an object for B-roll, as I will demonstrate right now. So as we can see, we're getting a nice 360 degree view of this BB-8 right here. Uh, it just kind of makes B-roll a little bit more interesting, especially if you have an interesting object to showcase, such as something like this has a lot of detail all the way around, or maybe it's something you've 3D printed, like this Joel bot right here. There's a lot happening with it. And it's something that just your normal pans and tilts aren't gonna properly capture. And the thing is, it might seem a little bit fast right now, but you can take this into post, and if you film in like 60 frames per second, slow it down, get some really nice stuff. You can even pan um, nice up and down or side to side while it's spinning, get some really fun effects. So we've got a couple of controls happening here on the front of the box uh, where all the electronics are inside. Uh, we've got the ability to change directions, either, either uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. We've got the ability to, first of all, turn it on with this potentiometer. It's got a switch on it, which is nice. And then the ability to control the speed. And then we've also got the ability to switch voltages uh, going to the servo motor, either 3.3 either, uh, volt or 5 volt. Uh, and the reason why I did that was I found that when I was trying to decide like which one to use, I found they both had different qualities that I was could see myself wanting for different scenarios. The 3.3 volt, obviously it's like slightly underpowered for the servo, but it can still give kind of some fun effects with it. The 5 volt's obviously more stable, but it can't go quite as slowly as the 3.3 volt just in general. It's just giving too much juice even when adjusting the servo. So that's why I have a switch um, to switch between the two voltages going to the servo. And then moving on from there, just looking at the components, obviously we've got two switches here. I really like these kind of switches. Um, I've used them in a couple projects, including the NeoPixel Menorah. That's how we are switching on each individual light. We've always got this potentiometer that also has a switch on it. Um, inside, the board that we're using is an Itsy Bitsy M0 Express board from Adafruit, and that means this is all being powered by CircuitPython. On top of the Itsy Bitsy board, we also have a LiPo backpack, and what that means is it hooks onto the three power pins kind of at the front of the board, so that it creates a, a LiPo battery charging circuit. So when I plug this into a USB, it's also charging up the battery. It also means it can run off a LiPo battery with no issue whatsoever. There's also two pins on the board that allow you to easily wire in a button to power on and off. So that's where the switch is wired in as well. Uh, and then um, additionally, we have this USB um, extension header here. Uh, and now you're probably thinking, oh, Liz, that's supposed to be inside. And I, I know it probably is. Uh, <laughs> But I kind of like the look of it outside, and my whole point in wanting to integrate this was I didn't want to have to mess with having a big enough cutout uh, for the USB um, cable. And having it outside like this makes it so that, um, you know, I don't have to worry about making sure I have enough clearance for the cable to go into the hole in the box. Because uh, this is, I made this a fairly thick um, wall. It's about four millimeters, which is probably overkill, but just because it was, it could possibly holding heavier things, this is actually surprisingly has some weight to it. I just wanna make sure the housing could stand up to it. As a result, I didn't wanna to have to deal with the hole, really. So that's where this comes in. And it works out really nicely. I got a clean plug. I have two holes here that the uh, screws countersunk when I put them in and everything's good to go. So the code, as I said, it's written in CircuitPython. I actually did a standalone video just on the code about two weeks ago at this point. Uh, and it was kind of a bigger video on like how my process for writing code in general, but the example project that I used was actually the code for this project. So if you're interested in seeing step-by-step -step how I wrote the code and everything like that, check out that video. I'll link it down in the description. I'll also throw it at the end, oh, that little card thing. Obviously, this is a 3D printed enclosure. It is a snap fit box. We've got the lid right here. Again, shout out to the Ruiz brothers. I said it last time in um, the uh, for the NeoPixel dialer, like that tutorial on how to do snap fit enclosures is just 
top notch. Um, I will throw that down in the description as well. You can't go wrong following that tutorial. It's literally foolproof. Uh, and then obviously this is a box. I actually did a chamfer to get this diagonally flat edge here and then extrude it in by like two millimeters to get it to be filled in but not have kind of a bump on the edge. Uh, and then I also have some arrows here to show the different directions and I used the text effect to put the three volt and five volt symbols on the side. Um, and we've got some holes cut out here for the switches and the potentiometer. Uh, everything about the design in Fusion 360 is parametric so you can edit everything you want. Um, and I'm going to be releasing the Fusion 360 file both on Thingiverse and in the tutorial that I eventually write for this project as well. Um, and outside of the enclosure, we also have the actual turntable, which lifts right off. Uh, I built it to be uh, totally modular. It just sits on top of the servo, which it is a continuously uh, rotating servo. Uh, and it just sits on the top here. And so there's just a lip here that sits right on top of the circular piece. And that's so that if you want a different color or a different size or even a different shape, if you wanted, you can do that. Uh, See, so yeah, I got a purple one here. It sits right on top. Uh, this is kind of the first design. Um, in the next design, I made this a little bit deeper. This is pretty shallow, but this is going to be the final version that you'll be able to download and use. So it sits right on there. And the servo I also made so that you can pop it out really easily. It's going to make me eat my words. It's snug, but you can get it out. Yeah. And there's a little notch on the side for the cable to sit in and that's so that nothing gets cramped. And I made it so that you could pull it out because sometimes the servos, you have to adjust them with a little nut on the bottom. And so I want to be able to do that really easily or if for some reason I need to swap it in in general. I just like being able to get to the parts in a project as easily as I can, especially if you want to reuse something or anything like that. You can see it snaps right in and sits right in there. There were just some minor issues with this print that I've since corrected in the actual Fusion 360 file and the final STL file that you'll be able to download will have these corrections in place. Um, basically, uh, and you'll see in the assembly footage, uh, this was a little bit off. Um, and I and also the whole position for the potentiometer was also a little bit off. I needed a little bit more clearance on the bottom so that everything could fit in properly. It was really snug. Uh, so I used this tool, which is a traditionally for PVC pipes, so you can kind of grind out on the circle. It's a very sharp blade, so you don't want to touch it. But basically what you do is on the 3D printer or anything like that, you just kind of go around and kind of swoop it out, and it just cleans everything up or widens things if you need to. So I need to do it here and here. And like I said, I've since corrected it in the file, so if you download this, you shouldn't have to deal with that. I didn't print a new one for myself because it really isn't noticeable, fully assembled. And I didn't want to uh, waste all that filament just for like that tiny issue. I just wanted to mention it though so that you're aware that that happens. And also maybe you can learn from my design mistakes so you don't have that happen when you do your first print of your design. So I make this. Obviously, like I said, it's great for B-roll. Any motion in footage adds interest. Uh, and I'm hoping that this will add some interest to my shots. I always try to kind of keep things pretty fresh with how I do approach my videos and make my videos, trying different things for B-roll or different just ways to set up shots. So, so I'm hoping having this be available to showcase items that I make, whether it be like a 3D print or a circuit, just to kind of show it off and add some interest to a shot. Uh, and having the ability to swap these in, although they are also a long print, uh, will also be pretty cool to get different color effects as well. Just being able to add another option for B-roll beyond pans and tilts with the tripod, I think will just really kind of open up kind of uh, my creativity with the B-roll. I really love doing that aspect of video and anything to kind of help that creative process uh, I'm down for. So I've definitely noticed like adding 3D printing to my like making arsenal. Um, I've started to make more objects that perhaps you could buy otherwise. Um, and I just think there's something so special about being able to look at something that may have a premium cost associated with it, but on its surface is very simple and be able to figure out what you need to have working for the electronics and the code and then get an enclosure going um, for it so that it's functional, um, but tailor it to your needs. Like you probably couldn't buy, I haven't done research, but you probably couldn't buy a turntable that you can like swap 
the actual turntables on and one that also can control the speed and the direction and even the voltage like I just don't think that that probably exists but you could totally buy a generic turntable that you just turn on it spins and it probably cost you around $60 USD um, if it was like remotely nice uh, and like video stuff always has like a premium attached to it so just being able to kind of make this uh, is just really cool I think another aspect of this project I really enjoyed was working with a servo motor I haven't worked a lot with them but I have a lot of projects planned actually that are going to involve them coming up so getting kind of my feet wet with something simple where I'm just making it spin and changing the direction and also tuning it so that it would um, be off when I have the potentiometer off <laughs> is handy because uh, servos they're they're funny little components uh, they have kind of their own learning curve to them and their own little um, technicalities that you have to keep in mind so kind of learning with this project for them was a uh, is really handy and it kind of gave me some insight into some things I'd struggled with in the past when I'd attempted projects you know once I get those projects done uh, I may actually do a video just talking about servos in general similar to the piezo video I did a while back which was surprisingly popular uh, so uh, maybe a servo video will come in a bit once I have that experience under my belt with projects so I can kind of speak to a real world experience with them but that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, toss me a thumbs up if you did and leave any questions or comments down below. I'm curious if there's any kind of DIY gear that you have made to kind of get stuff done uh, to avoid having to buy it or if there's any ideas that you'd like to throw out there. Um, I really love these kind of projects where they are like real world um, scenario. This is also kind of an example of practical printing uh, and I just... I really enjoy this because it's kind of the project that keeps on giving, especially if it is a project that you can use when doing videos for other projects. It just, it's a beautiful continuous circle. It kind of spins around like a turntable. But anyway, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.